Okay, so in the previous lecture, we talked about electronegativity and radius, how that affects pKa. Let's talk about molecular structure. The thing I like to focus most on is your adjacent double bonds, because what they're going to do is, via resonance, they'll stabilize electrons. This electron comes in one of two, form, one of two forms. You have the negative charge, which happens with HA becoming A-, minus, or you just have an electron pair that's present on the base, so BH plus becoming B. Now when it comes to double bonds, the stabilization is going to be better if the double bond is attached to an oxygen rather than a carbon. And that makes sense because, you know, oxygen, pretty electronegative, good at stabilizing negative charge. And then number two, the thing to keep in mind is if you have multiple double bonds, that'll be better than just a single double bond. A couple of examples to demonstrate this, okay, the OH acids, right? Here we have methanol, all right, the pKa for methanol. It's got no double bonds next to it. We're going to say that the pKa for methanol is 15.2. If, if you replace the methyl group with an aryl group, look at this resonance that you can have to delocalize the negative charge. All right? You can spread out the negative charge, and what happens is um, with a phenol, the pKa drops from 15.2 all the way to about 10. Okay, So double bonded carbon, good. Even better would be if you had acetic acid and a double bonded oxygen, that stabilization of the negative charge via resonance drops the pKa all the way to 4.8. All right, and then if you have two uh, double bonded oxygens, you know, you have your choice of, do I wanna go with the top oxygen or the bottom oxygen? And that's great at stabilizing the conjugate base. It drops the pKa of the acidic form all the way to negative 2.6, okay? Remember, Stabilize the conjugate base via resonance, you make the acid stronger. Another topic that demonstrates the whole adjacent double bonds and how they stabilize electrons, amide protonation. Okay, so amide protonation, what's going on here is there's a resonance structure that occurs that really involves this electron pair on the NH2 group. Okay. So the resonance structure that results from pushing the electrons in the manner that I just drew is going to place the negative charge on the oxygen. Okay, it places the negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on the nitrogen. Okay, the bottom form is well, the one that's going to be preferred. Okay, this is going to be preferred. And the reason why it's preferred is because oxygen is just really, really negative, really, really electronegative. And since it's really, really electronegative, it loves to have that negative charge presence. Okay. So the way I think about it is this electron pair, it's not really available to get protonated. It's participating in resonance, and the preferred resonance structure is the bottom one. So if you wanted to protonate an amide, the H plus would have to go onto the oxygen, all right? But this is not very good at getting protonated. In fact, the, pro, the pKa is about negative one. So any sort of H plus that gets protonated, it pretty much just goes off, okay? And the last thing that I wanna mention, the last example is whether or not we can have a negative charge on a nitrogen. So here we have various NH2 groups and whether or not they could get deprotonated to form NH minus. Um, we go with just the single methyl group, we replace it with an aryl group, and then we put a double bond next to it. These ones don't form, okay? These ones don't form, the molecules on the right do form. All right, nitrogen doesn't really like to be negatively charged, but you could have that presence if you have, okay, so this only happens if you have two adjacent double bonds and it has to be like with an oxygen. So the first group we have an amide, we have an imide, all right? The reason why the imide works or can get deprotonated is because you have two oxygens to share and distribute that negative charge. Um, the reason why the sulfonamide group works is because, again, two, um, two oxygens to help stabilize that negative charge. Okay, so yeah, double bonds, really good if they're with oxygen, even better if you have two of them. But keep in mind, even though we have these two double bonded oxygens to help stabilize these structures, it's not all that strong. I mean, the imide group is a pKa of about 
9.6, okay? And the sulfonamide has a pKa of 10.4, okay? So they're still pretty high pKa's, but it's possible to deprotonate because you have the presence of those double bonded oxygens to help delocalize that negative charge that results on the nitrogen.